Go ahead and put your... Once again, Your Honor, appearances for the record, William Barnwell, Barnwell Law, PLLC, appearing on behalf of uh, Joshua West for the arraignment of Yvette McDonald. Uh, Your Honor, I've explained to my client the nature of the charges and the maximum possible penalty, so I ask for a, that we would waive a formal reading of the charges. My client will stand mute and ask for a not guilty plea to be entered when we enter into the bond hearing. Right. Ms. McDonald, want to give me your name and address for the court record? Yvette McDonald. All right. Counsel, uh, Mr. Barnwell is waiving the formal reading. I will waive the formal reading. And uh, I'm being asked to enter a not guilty, not guilty plea on her behalf. Have you gone through the nature of a probable cause? I, I have with her? I've explained that, but for the record, uh, especially what we just discussed with the co-defendant. Ms. McDonald, you have the right to something called a probable cause conference within 14 days of your arraignment date and a prelim preliminary exam within 21 days. I am advising you to waive that time period, which you have the right to do if the judge consents, so that your legal counsel has more time to prepare. And uh, there has been a date proposed of May 23rd, which would be outside of that 14-day window for that probable cause conference. I would strongly suggest that we wait, that you waive voluntarily before the judge the 14 and 21 day window so your defense has more time to prepare for your hearing. Do you, do you voluntarily consent to waive that time period? Yes. All right, the court will accept the waiver. Let's address the, uh, and, and uh, are we adopting uh, the same dates that we did? We're going to do a probable cause conference. Probable cause conference around uh, May 23rd at 1.30, correct? Yes, May 23rd. And uh, at that time, we discuss the scheduling for the probable cause uh, here. Let's address the issue of bond. I would indicate, Your Honor, that. Uh, it would appear Ms. McDonald does have a relatively clean record. There may have been one fraudulent issue with a city case in Shelby several years ago. The maximum offense that she's charged with here is a 10-year offense. It was essentially her making a statement to a friend that set the ball rolling on this. I would indicate that we would ask the court to consider a bond at the court's discretion with any provisions and conditions concerning contact. Uh, I don't think it should be a personal bond. This is a homicide case. This is 14 months later. She did not voluntarily come forward to the police at the time. This was through a friend of hers. And so I would ask that there be something so that she recognizes that uh, the offense that co-defendant is charged with is serious, the community takes it seriously. Um, Others should, should take it seriously. And the 14-month delay clearly shows us some issues that need to be addressed. Mr. Barnwell? First of all, I want to thank Mr. Cataldo for his nuanced remarks, and I agree in part and disagree in part. But I will say this. When we look at the bond factors and we look at the Michigan court rules, I want to point out that, number one, my client is only 18 years old. She's a senior in high school. She's scheduled to graduate uh, this June, and she's completing her degree. She's scheduled to walk June 16th. She's already enrolled for college. She's from Macomb Community College. She plans on studying genetic engineering. She's uh, set to take her SAT in uh, June 6th. She does have very limited prior contact with the criminal justice system. She has retained counsel. She's not a flight risk whatsoever. She has strong community ties. Uh, present in the courtroom is her mother and her grandmother. Her grandmother is actually an employee of the 52 uh, uh, court, courtroom 52-4 out in Troy, where I have a lot of practice. And she knows the court system very, very well. And if Mrs. McDonald, Ms. McDonald was to be released on a bond, she would be staying with her grandmother. And I would not object to whatever to some type of electronic monitoring. But she poses no risk of flight. Obviously, this is a serious case, serious charge. But it is, at this point in the game, merely an allegation. Everything you heard from the detective and everything you heard from the people, these are all allegations. And this is a young woman. I don't, we're not going to get into the facts of the case, but we also have to look at her relatively young age. So she does not, despite the charges, and I know this might sound 
you know, but I will strongly advocate that she is not a, not a risk to society. She can uh, be released on bond. She can stay with her grandmother, which uh, she'd be staying in Washington Township. Um, she's got schooling to complete, colleges she's enrolled in, and we'll let the actual facts of the place play out, play out in the preliminary exam in, as things go on. We don't know exactly what happened. Right now, it is all just allegations. So I know, I know that we're not going to set a personal bond. What I would ask this court to grant would be a $10,000, 10% bond. If the court is not inclined to grant that, I would ask you maybe meet me halfway and, and issue a, a $10,000 cash surety bond. And if, if the court does not want to grant that, I would ask to, to send a stronger signal to the public, perhaps a $100,000, 10% provision, so that she could still have the opportunity to be out on bond, go to school, she'll be under electronic monitoring if, if you want to order that, she'll be with her grandmother, she doesn't pose a flight risk, she'll be back here at court, she's not going to pose any threat to the public, and she will be cooperative with this court every step along the way. But rather than her case, her attorney's trying to, to deal with her in the Macomb County Jail, she's got retained counsel, let her have the fairness, right now it's just an accusation, let her have the fairness where she can be on the outside working on her education, have the ability and freedom to deal with her attorneys on this matter, so that she can get a fair shake. Because as we know, the people got all the resources in the world, world to prosecute her. Let's level the playing field, it's just an allegation, I know it's a serious one, one that the public should take seriously, so I'd ask... At the, at the very minimum, if you want to send a very strong signal to the public, you can set it 100000 with the 10% provision, or I ask for uh, a $10,000 cash surety bond. Anything else on the issue of bond? Just that whatever bond the court sets would be a condition to have no contact with the victim, no victim's family. We'd obviously uh, agree with that. Gentlemen, uh, looking at the seriousness of this, uh, I'm understanding, Mr. Barnwell, exactly what you're saying. What I'll do here is I'm going to set bond at, uh, I'm going to set it at $20,000. I'm going to make that a cash surety bond. I'm very concerned about this. Uh, of course, there's to be no charges of any kind. Absolutely no contact with Mr. Fiaco. I want a GPS tether. anything else to come before the court at this point? No, I thank you for, I, I believe that's a fair decision. I thank you for your consideration for the defense arguments. As you, you indicated, no contact with Mr. Fiaco. Could I ask you to also include the no contact with the victim's family? Yes, absolutely. And one Mr. more thing. Donald, oh, do you understand everything that we've done here with regard to the bond? Clearly, be no contact whatsoever. Mr. Fiaco, absolutely no contact with the uh, uh, family of the uh, deceased. Now, if I, I may just address my client, every call you make is recorded. Do not say anything on these phones recorded. You're presumed innocent. Do not discuss this case on the phone with anybody in the jails. Yes, sir. That's all I have, Your Honor. Okay. Nothing further from the paper, Your Honor. All right, well said. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, sir, have a good day. Thank you.